So what I'm going to be talking to you today about is governance, right, and its role within the changing realm of IT as cloud technologies mature, okay? Cloud is an opportunity and also a risk inherently. We can do things a lot quicker and sloppier, or we can do things in a more pointed manner and in a very concerted manner to actually improve our security stance. So one of the major issues when stepping into the cloud is a lack of a governance strategy. So if you don't have a governance strategy that's mature today, it's gonna to be very difficult to adopt a new paradigm where actually your responsibilities in some way increase because it's so much easier to ignore what's happening underneath the covers, okay? So when adopting cloud applications and platforms, you really need to pay attention to how exactly that service is getting delivered to you. And what that means is that yes, there are a lot of responsibilities you can now ignore when you move to an infrastructure as a service. And we saw some of them. Your virtualization layer, your storage, server, network, right? That compute layer. Uh, the actual IP devices that are used for your virtual IP, your firewalls, load balancers. You're responsible for the configuration, but you're not sure what that's being deployed with. Now today, the way we're dealing with that is advising customers, go do a site visit with your cloud provider. Ask them, how are you actually providing this? How often do you do your firmware updates? How often do you do, you do your patches on your host machines? Okay? But what we're seeing is that customers are recognizing that this is something that needs to happen on an ongoing basis. It's not a point in time at service delivery. It's something that needs to be audited. And right now, APIs available from the major cloud providers do not expose the ability to perform many types of important infrastructure audit. Okay? This correlates up into the responsibilities of your service sourcing organization in actually being able to properly bring those services into your organization and leverage them without actually lessening your security stance, okay? So governance is all about defining those priorities and strategic direction. So automation and security go hand in hand, as for a long time. Automation is once again just the ability to automatically perform simple actions as part of a life cycle when standing up a service. Now cloud, any cloud application, whether it's platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, software as a service, should expose APIs. An API is an application programming interface. Now those APIs allow us a level of granular control over the environment and over the service model. If we leverage that very strongly and in a pointed manner, with tools in place to ensure compliance with our standards, we can actually end up with a better security stance than what is possible in most enterprises and most federal organizations today. The reason for that is simply maturity. It's very difficult to correlate all the different pieces of information within a given data center. What these cloud providers are offering you is the ability to have a data model already in place. A number of your organizations have probably dealt with a CMDB in the past, right? Or have one implemented today or half implemented. That CMDB theoretically gives you the capability to do a lot of important correlation and audits. Problem is most organizations don't properly leverage it. Any cloud provider worth its salt today has a CMDB underlying their infrastructure, okay? There's a lot of talk about how ITIL is changing, the CMDB no, may no longer be relevant, but we need something to correlate all those data points, all those CIs. The ITIL model is still appropriate within the cloud age. There's some updates that need to be made, but still totally appropriate, okay? So the trick is to ensure that that model you understand. Not just what the service is, not just that I have a web interface I can go to, but how your data is being stored, how that data is getting correlated to a service, Right? The easiest way we often portray to people is you are the subscriber or you might be the provider. There is a provider administrator. If you are doing a private cloud, you are the provider administrator. Then there is a subscriber. There's often a subscriber admin and there's a subscriber user. What you want to ensure is that as the subscriber, 
okay? And even if you're doing private cloud, you're still a subscriber also to that cloud. Your subscriber admin understands the responsibilities requisite to ensure secure and agile use of that service, okay? And that means having a discussion, taking a look at the APIs available, ensuring the tool set is in place, understanding how to perform the appropriate audits, et cetera. Getting back the appropriate metrics. I'll be talking about that a little bit later, but being able to get that metric feedback in a meaningful manner and report on it. That's something that's actually missing from a lot of cloud providers today, and it is essential. So this is Peter Drucker. He's uh, well known within management circles, and this is a quote from him, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. And that applies especially in IT, as most of us already know. This does not change with cloud at all in any way, shape, or form. In fact, in many ways, it becomes more important. Why? Once again, because you're letting responsibilities that originally sat with a team, a team who communicated, right, inside of your organization, you're letting those responsibilities move outside of your doors. And what that means is that to be able to maintain a level of governance over this disparate set of teams, set of sourcing options, right, if you go out to three different companies to get your services, that means you now have three different relationships to maintain. And it's not about just making sure the checks are paid. It's not about making sure the service is up, though that's part of it. It's about ensuring they meet your standards on an ongoing basis, that you understand how changes they make to their infrastructure impact your standards. Every time they make a change, there might be some new consideration you have to look at. If you don't have someone in your organization acting as a subscriber administrator who understands what those new implications are, then you might not find out until it's too late. Now, once again, coming back to the CMDB, the CMDB, if properly populated at the time of the service creation, allows us to tie the metrics we get at the back end of the process, right? We don't get metrics when we, when we immediately provision a service. And a lot of people, that's where their attention span stops with cloud services. Oh, it's deployed, I'm done, right? Not reality. Reality is that you end up getting these metrics, you have to correlate those. You have to be able to say, here's where they go. Here's what this means. Here's who requested it. Here's the service they requested. Telling me that the utilization on X VM is this doesn't tell me that that VM is part of this service stack. That service stack is servicing these users. These users have this SLA. To get all of that information correlated, which is what you have to do as an organization, regardless of where the service comes from, you need to be able to have some form of CMDB, or we're seeing the rise of the configuration management system being used in this role. It's not really logical to use it that way, but we've seen some organizations be successful there, right? Your cloud provider won't do that for you. Your cloud provider does not necessarily understand how you are leveraging their infrastructure as a service environment. If they don't understand how, where those servers you've deployed sit within your hierarchy, within your service delivery framework, how can they possibly give you this information? And that means it is your responsibility. So tying it together. The governance process creates standards. The standards define the automation best practices. Okay, now it doesn't matter if you're the one performing the automation in a private cloud model. Okay, and just to be clear, the delta between a virtualized environment and a private cloud environment is very small. It's a portal, self-service portal, and the automation to perform actions based on the requests made via that portal. There's some other pieces around dynamic capacity, being able to correlate your service uh, usage to your delivery infrastructure and being able to automatically stand up new instances. What is that? That's automation. There's another piece around being able to do chargeback. What is chargeback? Taking a metric 
correlating it to a cost, spitting that back out of the customer via that portal for chargeback internal purposes, right? Bill back, full on, real money, a little bit more complex, but that's basically the concept. So there isn't a huge delta between a virtualized environment for production and a private cloud. The responsibilities don't go away, but the opportunities are huge, okay? Then we use audits to ensure that what we've deployed complies to our standards on an ongoing basis because people constantly change those configurations. I hear from customers all the time, well, I've got a real problem with this one IT, ad, IT director who doesn't obey the standards at all and I don't know what to do about it. Simple thing to do about it is run audits across the infrastructure in a standardized way and then when you've got that giant report that says, hey, look, you've got 60% more issues than anyone else, that's something you can put in their face as a director and say, hey, look, you've got a problem. Fix it. What if you don't have that and it's all hearsay and anecdotal? There's nothing you can do. Your engineers can come to you all day long and say, hey, I've got a problem with this guy. Hey, this guy's servers are insecure. Hey, I've got problems with this guy. If you have not defined standards, which your engineers are saying, he is violating this standard, this standard, and this standard, there's nothing you can do. Your hands are tied. I mean, there is, but obviously not necessarily keeping the happiest workforce in place. Compliance remediates any configurations that do not comply. That's simple. Maintaining a security stance is about saying, here's how I'm going to do things. Here's how my organization, here's how my vendors, here's how everyone who does business with me, gets services from me, is going to work with me. If we don't continuously ensure compliance with those standards, there will be deltas. 